So this is the revised 2022 guidelines um, by WHO, uh, recently published by the European Society of uh, Cardiology. So uh, they have categorized into groups, uh, five groups. The first group is the pulmonary arterial hypertension, uh, which as I said in the introduction, it is a, it's not a very common disorder. And that is the topic of interest today. Where we are going to mostly focus on this group of disorder. And uh, next will be group two, where uh, the pulmonary artery hypertension is associated with uh, left heart disease. For instance, uh, like the left atrial disease, uh, mitral heart disease, or um, cardiomyopathy. So here what happens is when there is a, a increase in the filling pressures of the left-sided heart, or left ventricle, or left atrium, uh, that uh, leads to an increase in the pulmonary artery pressure. So this we categorize as a reactive type of pulmonary hypertension. Uh, it's a reaction because when you have a filling pressure elevated on the left side, uh, naturally or obviously, the pulmonary pressure has to increase. That's so as you could maintain the forward flow. Otherwise, it can't. So it's a natural phenomenon. So the pulmonary pressure has to go up. And this situation is called as a reactive pulmonary hypertension that falls under group two. And uh, the next one will be the group three, where the pulmonary hypertension is associated with uh, uh, lung disorders uh, or any reasons due to hypoxia. Uh, for example, if we have a patient with uh, idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis or COPD, uh, in these patients, you have some amount of hypoxia. So that leads to a moderate elevation of the pulmonary pressure leading to pulmonary hypertension in the long standing. So those, those, the, those patients will come under group three. The next one will be group four. Uh, this is a quite common disorder where you have a most common uh, disorder being the chronic uh, thromboembolic disorders. And um, most of the pulmonary embolisms uh, do clear up spontaneously with the treatment, but still there will be some uh, thrombuses which don't get uh, cleared off and they result in some sort of scarring and uh, they result in chronic pulmonary hypoxia. That leads to a uh, pulmonary hypertension. And the next group is the uh, group five, where you have uh, really they have the potpourri of a lot of disorders, including sarcoidosis, some sort of anemias, and uh, many systemic disorders. So that's about the classification. So before going into the, uh, history, uh, have a look at the fluid dynamics. So this is a, this is a very uh, well-known thing. Uh, what I'm going to talk this we have uh, studied in our school days, mostly in the 10th, 9th standards. You know this radius of this. This is a fluid hemodynamics, but this also applies to our hemodynamics because the vessels are all tubes. So and the blood is uh, fluid. So when you have uh, the resistance is uh, indirectly related to the radius. That means if the radius of the vessel, or in, in other words, vasoconstriction, where the radius is reduced, then the resistance in the vessels will go up. So because it's indirectly related, uh, and it is vice versa. If you have vasodilatation, where the radius increases, the resistance falls. So this is a basic thing which we should know. And uh, the second thing is the Ohm's law, which is usually described for electricity. But this can be applied to fluid dynamics also. Uh, pressure is uh, related to flow and resistance. So when you have a fall in resistance, the pressure will fall. When you have a rise in the resistance, you have the pressure going up. So in this place, instead of putting resistance, if I put radius or vasoconstriction, suppose you have vasoconstriction, the radius uh, is reduced, so the pressure will go up. So that is the case which happens in pulmonary hypertension, in the group one pulmonary hypertension. Whereas in uh, certain situations like uh, congenital heart disease, where you have a shunt, like from left to right uh, shunt, where you have increased flow across the pulmonary artery. So when, you, when the flow also increases, according to this equation, the pressure has to go up without the increase in the resistance. So that, that forms a different group. So what we are going to see today is condition, means a group one, where the resistance go up because there is a reduction in the radius of the pulmonary vasculature. And uh, this is another uh, 
law of Laplace. Uh, here we should know this. This is also a basic thing where wall tension is directly related to pressure and inversely related to wall thickness. So when you have a heart that is pumping against high pressure, so the wall tension increases. So the wall tension increases because the pressure is more. Once the pressure is more, the wall tension increases. To equate it, the wall thickness has to increase. So this happens in both sides of the heart, whether it is a left side or the right side. So in the case of left side, where you have systemic hypertension, as the pressure goes up, when the left ventricle is pumping against high pressure for a longer duration, so the wall tension goes up. So to reduce the wall tension, the wall thickness increases, the resulting in left ventricular hypertrophy. So the same thing applies to the right ventricle. So when the pulmonary artery pressure goes up, the wall tension in the right ventricle increases. So to maintain that balance, the wall thickness, the right ventricular wall thickness increases, resulting in right ventricular hypertrophy. So why this wall tension is important? Because wall tension, otherwise the wall stress is directly related to the oxygen demand. So when the wall tension increases, there is an increase in the oxygen demand. So to balance these, all these things, natural things happen. So this is the physics of this system. And now we have the hemodynamic uh, definitions of pulmonary hypertension, which is uh, uh, means a recent update in our 2022 guidelines. So the most important thing, you are seeing a lot of numbers here. So the most important um, modification, or the very important modification is the definition of pulmonary hypertension. So the previously, the mean, art, mean pulmonary artery pressure, uh, uh, it has to be more than 25 millimeters of mercury. So then you call it as a pulmonary hypertension. But now they have changed the number to 20. Why? Because there are a lot of data to show that uh, people between 20 to 25 millimeters of mercury mean PA pressure, they, have, they don't have a long-term uh, good prognosis. So that is the reason. Not only that, if you look at the pulmonary vascular resistance, previously it was three wood units. Now they have changed to two wood units. The reason is the same. The people between two to three wood units, they don't do very well, even if it is a milder form of rice. So they have made the criteria to two wood units. So any patient with a PVR of more than uh, two wood units, or a mean pulmonary artery pressure of more than 20 millimeters of mercury, then we categorize them as pulmonary hypertension. And then you have a certain categories, um, hemodynamic categories. You have the pre-capillary pulmonary hypertension or isolated post-capillary hypertension. Uh, then the CPCPH means a combined pre- and post-capillary pulmonary hypertension. So you based on these uh, parameters, the PAWP is the pulmonary artery wedge pressure. So based on these three parameters, we, we can categorize them into these uh, four hemodynamic groups. And the another uh, update in our 2022 guidelines is they have introduced the new exercise pulmonary hypertension. So what is exercise pulmonary hypertension? So normally, if you look at the uh, um, look at the uh, 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 graph, I don't have a pointer. I don't know how to use a pointer here. But the lowermost line, which is uh, which is not steeply rising, which is shallow rising, one is the normal, you can see in the top normal, this the spired uh, markers. So if you see that, it is shallow. So with exercise, normally, uh, these mean arterial pressure to the cardiac output slope uh, should not increase to more than three millimeter of mercury per liter per minute. It means for every three mil, for every one liter increase in the cardiac output, the mean pulmonary artery pressure cannot go beyond three millimeter of mercury. Normally, it is in the range of 0.5 to 3. So for every one liter increase in the cardiac output, there could be an increase in the pressure by maximum of 3 millimeters of mercury. So if it is more than 3 millimeters of mercury per liter per minute, then you categorize them as the exercise-induced pulmonary artery hypertension. So here again, you are relating the same equation only. With the pulmonary artery pressure flow is the cardiac output. So when the cardiac output increases, naturally the pressure will increase. But in normal individual, the resistance part will come down as with exercise because of, there will be vasodilatation. But in patients with the pulmonary hypertension, the vasodilatory component is fault. 
So the resistance does not fall even when there is an increase in the flow or in the cardiac output with exercise. So that is why the pressure rises more than 3 millimeter of mercury per liter of mercury.